Today, we're providing an update on back to school planning for September. But before we look at what's ahead, I want to take a moment to extend my profound gratitude to teachers, school staff, and administrators. You have worked with compassion, strength, and determination. You have shown remarkable fortitude and leadership while supporting the changing needs of students throughout this unprecedented year. And I also want to thank parents and families for your tremendous commitment and hard work in ensuring your children have been able to learn in spite of the challenges of the pandemic. Our government has been and continues to be committed to following the direction and guidance of public health and working collaboratively with our education partners and with rights holders. The way we have all worked together uh, throughout this year has been remarkable. I think it really reaffirms the, the compassionate, resilient and caring nature of British Columbians. The vast majority of students returned to class full time this school year. We had school safety plans in place to reduce the spread of COVID and the evidence shows that these plans were indeed successful. There's no question it was a difficult year and in some parts of the province much more challenging than others. Since the start of the 2021 school year, the vast majority of schools in BC have been open and operating every day of the school year. And British Columbians are showing just how much they care about each other by getting vaccinated at amazing rates. It is expected that all eligible British Columbians will have been offered both vaccination doses by September, which is fantastic news. And we will hear more from uh, Dr. Henry on that front in a moment. So what this means is that students will be back in the classroom for full-time in-person instruction and the return to a near normal start to school in September. Based on guidance from the Office of the Provincial Health Officer, students will no longer be grouped into uh, cohorts or learning groups. Pending a further public health guidance, it's also expected that current restrictions on gatherings, extracurricular activities and sports will be relaxed in time for the new school year. And that's good news for everyone. I know that we want to move past the pandemic together and we're currently moving in the right direction. To support the safe operation of schools and the health and safety of students and staff, today we're announcing a total of $43.6 million. This includes new COVID-specific one-time funding of $25.6 million for the next school year. And that is on top of the $7.1 billion we announced in Budget 2021 to operate K-12 schools in BC. The $25.6 million in new one-time funding will be used to continue enhanced cleaning measures in schools and support the continuation of rapid response teams and used to support Indigenous students affected by the pandemic, as well as improving mental health services and supports for students and staff to address the impacts of isolation, stress and anxiety due to the pandemic. Our mental health working group will continue to meet and develop strategies and assess uh, and recommend mental health resources to support students and staff. We know the pandemic has not only impacted mental health, but has also impacted learning and educational equity. Early research is showing that those students most impacted are those who already faced structural barriers, including students living in poverty, Indigenous students, English language learners, and those who need more support in schools. And nothing's more important than addressing inequality and ensuring each and every child reaches their full potential in school. And that's why $18 million will directly address learning impacts to students. While school districts will have some flexibility to use uh, that uh, in how they use that $18 million, we, we want uh, to ensure that, that, uh, that, 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 those, uh, that, that those resources are used to meet local needs uh, and that funding is intended to um, assess learning impacts on students due, the, due to the pandemic, develop and deliver additional resources to address learning impacts and to deliver recovery strategies designed by school districts. Guidance on mask wearing in school settings will be confirmed later this summer and will align with broader provincial direction. What will remain the same uh, is that uh, we, we will expect students and staff to continue to complete daily health checks, stay home when they feel sick, 
and practice diligent hand hygiene. With more than 50% of, uh, of children age 12 to 17 already receiving their first dose of vaccine, and those numbers continue to grow, we can plan for a much more typical school year starting in the fall. Our provincial K-12 steering committee, which is made up of educators, parents, support workers, school leaders, trustees, representatives from the First Nations Education Steering Committee and the Métis Nation BC, as well as public health experts, has been absolutely invaluable in navigating the pandemic and keeping our schools safe this year. We will continue to work with the committee and the BC Centre for Disease Control over the summer to review and finalize health and safety guidelines for the fall. We will continue to follow the guidance and direction of public health and follow the evidence when making decisions. I'm very proud of the work that has been done by everyone to ensure that BC is one of the few jurisdictions to develop and implement a system-wide plan to keep our schools open and safe this school year. That accomplishment and commitment to keeping schools open is a testament to the tireless work of our education and health professionals, along with the dedication of students, parents and families throughout BC. We're committed to continuing to work together so that we can pr prepare for a safe and a near normal return to school in September. And now I realize I was remiss earlier on in not uh, acknowledging our guests um, today. We, I'm here today with uh, uh, our provincial health officer, Dr. Dr. Henry, as well as Stephanie Higginson, uh, president of the uh, BC School Trustees Association. And we're joined uh, uh, as well by Andrea Sinclair, the president of the BC Confederation of um, Parent Advisory Committees. And you're gonna have a chance to hear a little bit from all of them, uh, starting with uh, Dr. Henry. Thank you very much and good morning. We know that this has been a challenging year and we've been using that word a lot for everyone. But we have adapted and we've learned and we've learned a lot about COVID-19 over this past 18 months. And despite all of the challenges, educators, um, schools have been open and uh, school staff have supported our children and families across the province. Being in class, is more than just education, as important as that is. We know it's about social, physical, emotional, and mental health as well. And it is so, so important. We heard unequivocally in when we had to close schools early on before uh, we had a better understanding of how this virus was transmitted, that it impacted families and communities across the board. And it was important for us to commit to making that a priority as we moved into the fall this year. That the school community is essential to the well-being of families and communities across the province. And I am so proud that working together, we have supported the safe reopening and continued opening of in-class schools throughout this year, this most challenging year. And it really is a testament to the dedication of educators and school staff across British Columbia. But we are now in a time of transition where we can safely restart and get some of those important social connections back together. We are gradually progressing with our BC Restart program with a focus on putting the pandemic behind us and learning how we can move ahead and live with COVID-19 in a way that is much more fulsome than we have been. And this, um, the reason we can do this is because we have safe and effective vaccines that are protecting people across British Columbia. Our goal in particular for our schools is to get to the point that we can take the same approach that we do now with other communicable diseases, whether it's influenza or measles, where we can manage them on a local basis, on an individual basis, without having those broad impacts on society that we have had this past year. We will continue to actively monitor for COVID and other infectious diseases and work with our schools to make sure they continue to be safe. And we will continue to do that public health work to manage and contain spread in our communities as well. Over the next months of summer, we can start to gradually remove the orders and restrictions as more and more people are protected through immunization. That means by September, we will be back to a much more normal school experience.
The safety layers we use today are very important tools in our toolbox, and we will need to be ready to use them if needed as we move into the fall. But some we'll be able to take away, and we've talked a little bit about some of those today. Others will continue. We will always need to clean our hands regularly. We know that's important. Staying home when you're sick, getting tested if symptoms develop. We are on a very good trajectory, but I will reassure everybody we will be watching this carefully and will continue to do so as we move through the summer and we will be developing our plans in concert with all of the team at the provincial level to make sure that schools are ready in the fall. Planning will continue to be based on evidence, on data and on learning as we go. We know that even though we will be emerging from the pandemic, we will still need to watch and manage COVID and other respiratory illnesses in the fall. And we will be updating our, our health and safety guidelines and advice to schools uh, with the BC CDC as we move through the summer. Public health teams will also continue to work with every single school and with the provincial team to make sure that schools are ready in September for the best possible return to typical in-fall setting as much as we can. To the educators, staff and administrators, I am so grateful for all that you have put into this year. I know it has been hard in some cases, but you have done this and it has been so, so important for our families and our communities. And to parents, thank you for your support as well, even when things were very much in flux through many parts of this past year. It has not always been easy, but the adaptability, resilience and strength of our school communities and our youth has really shone through here in BC. And finally, I want to say congratulations to those who are graduating this year. This is an experience that was much different, I'm sure, than you were expecting, but it is also something that you have overcome. And in successfully overcoming the obstacles that you did this year, that is something you will take with you for the rest of your life and know that you have that strength and resilience when things get tough in your future. But I want to say congratulations. You've done an amazing job through a very challenging year and I think that is reason to celebrate for everybody. Thank you very much. I'll now turn it over to uh, over. Do you want to introduce to Stephanie Higginson to say a few words? Good morning. I'm honored to be on the territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. And I too want to begin by acknowledging that the COVID-19 pandemic has been hard on all of us. It's been hard on communities, it's been hard on businesses, and it's been hard on families. It has been particularly difficult for children and youth who have lost connections to supports and sacrificed activities and experiences that so many of us remember so fondly from our own formative years. Schools are where we learn, they're where our early social and emotional learning takes place, they are also where we make lifelong connections to friends, to teachers, to mentors, to teams, and activities that shape our lives. In British Columbia, we have been fortunate. Boards of Education, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education and the Provincial Health Office, pulled out all the stops to keep students in school all year, all year long to make sure that learners would benefit from the critical supports provided by schools. We are proud that British Columbia prioritized the health and well-being of children and youth by keeping schools open for the entire school year. Together, we proved that with the appropriate health and safety measures in place, education can and should be a priority even during a global pandemic. It was a monumental task that asked a lot of every person in this sector and everyone rose to the challenge. And we did so because of how much we care for the students we serve. We are grateful to everyone for the sacrifices they made in recognition of the critical role schools play in the lives of students, communities and society at large. Thank you to the dedicated staff across the entire K-12 sector who made all of this possible. Each and every one of you played an integral role in this extremely complicated but very successful school year. And thank you to the families and students who worked hard to comply with the safety measures that made this school year possible. It's been extraordinarily difficult, 
but it has been successful and this year will set us up for a smoother transition into our recovery phase. And with hope on the horizon, we can look back and feel tre a tremendous sense of achievement at the incredible efforts we took to keep kids in school during this very challenging school year. Building on the same diligence and care, I am grateful and relieved to be here today delivering a message of hope based on the most up-to-date science that has guided BC so successfully through this pandemic. We are here today to signal the first careful steps towards a pandemic recovery school year. Boards of Education will continue to work with their local medical health officers to create return to school plans that parallel the province's staged recovery plan. Boards will work with the same thoughtfulness demonstrated this school year to meet the needs of students as we transition to a post-pandemic world. We recognize and we understand that the pandemic has impacted each community differently and each Board of Education will build a COVID-19 recovery plan that meets the nuanced needs of the communities that they serve. Over the last year and a half, British Columbians in every community pulled together to keep each other safe. As we move forward, boards will continue working with their communities to keep learning, keep kids learning, growing and thriving in every part of the province. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I'd now like to turn it over to Andrea Sinclair, the president of the BC Confederation of Parent Advisory Committees. Good morning and thank you, Minister Whiteside. I acknowledge I am speaking today from my home on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. I'm Andrea Sinclair and I'm the president of the BC Confederation of Parent Advisory Councils. BC CPAC is the provincially mandated voice of parents who represents over 565,000 students attending public schools. I wish to thank our dedicated board and our CEO. Together, we have attended over 125 meetings since March 2020. I am proud to say BC CPAC has worked diligently to bring the parent perspective and voice to each committee and influence decisions and policies. As has already been noted, it has been a challenging year for us all. I understand these challenges firsthand as I have two children in high school. By working together, our schools have remained open and safe. By doing so, children were able to benefit from the social and emotional supports offered at their neighborhood school. It also meant our children were able to have consistency in their lives by ensuring that their daily routines would remain. By schools remaining open, it meant our children could continue to interact with peers and trusted adults. It also allowed our children to take advantage of the much needed supports like breakfast and hot lunch programs. As I took my place on the K-12 Steering and Restart Committees, I was impressed with how hard parents, educators, support staff, healthcare experts, and ministry personnel worked as a team to ensure that schools met health and safety guidelines. I'm grateful to each of our education partners for their knowledge, effort, and dedication. Through this experience, I am more confident than before that our school system can overcome any adversity it may face. There is no substitute for the in-class experience, and that is why we support the K-12 recovery plan and the return to school in September, where all students can be back learning full-time in their classrooms. Children and families can expect that their school and school district will be prepared, responsive, and flexible in meeting individual student needs, including acknowledging and addressing impacts from the pandemic on learning, mental health, and well-being. It's been a time of adaptation for all of us, children, families, and school staff. It's now time for parents to return to our schools to help reinvigorate our communities. It's now time for parent advisory councils to re-engage with their families. It is important for us to share with families today so that they can plan and adapt for September, but also find time to rest, recharge, and reset over the summer. And as we look with hope to September and the near normal return to school, BCCPAC will continue working with our provincial education partners and the ministry throughout the summer to finalize the plans for September while continuing to take our lead from the PHO. We will keep members and families informed as information is available. We have listened and learned from each other. We have supported and leaned on each other. The phrase, it takes a village, has never been truer. Thank you.